With books. Yes, sir. Books. But there is very little call for the services of a librarian. Case in point, a minister. A minister would tell us that his function is that of preaching the word of God. And, of course, it follows that since the state has proven that there is no God, that would make the function of a minister somewhat academic as well. There is a God. You are in error, Mr. Wordsworth. There is no God. The state has proven that there is no God. You cannot erase God with an edict. You are obsolete, Mr. Wordsworth. You have no function, Mr. Wordsworth. You're an anachronism, like a ghost from another time. I am nothing more than a reminder to you that you cannot destroy truth. You're a bug, Mr. Wordsworth, a crawling insect. An ugly, misformed little creature who has no purpose here, no meaning. I am a human being. I exist. And if I speak one thought aloud, that thought lives even after I'm shoveled into my grave. Delusions, Mr. Wordsworth. Delusions. The Bible, poetry, essays of all kind, all of it an opiate. The state has no use for your kind. was created 6,000 years ago in six days by God. I am confused. Being philosophically consistent and being a very honest person, I'm sure you can tell me where God came from. And in addition, in addition, once you've told me where God comes from, uh, please try to clarify how you can figure that a spiritual force can have an impact on a material universe to create it. I think that some years ago we already talked about that kind of thing in uh, philosophical circles at any rate by posing the question if angels are made of uh, spiritual matter and a pin is made of material matter and spiritual matter displaces no space, how many angels can dance on the tip of a pen? But, but please do, go ahead. you got five minutes. Now, I just want to know which question. That's all right. You may take the rest of the minute. We're supposed to do one question at a time. Which one would you like? That was part of the format for the debate. So which, which I question? want you to fill in the story of the rest of the uh, beginning of the universe. God, spiritual matter, impact on material matter. Okay. So two questions. All right. Go ahead. All right, your question, where did God come from, assumes that you're thinking of the wrong, uh, obviously it displays, that you're thinking of the wrong God, <laughs> because the God of the Bible d is not affected by time, space, or matter. It
affected by time, space, or matter, he's not God. Time, space, and matter is what we call a continuum. All of them have to come into existence at the same instant. Because if there were matter but no space, where would you put it? If there were matter and space but no time, when would you put it? You cannot have time, space, or matter independently. They have to come into existence simultaneously. The Bible answers that in ten words. In the beginning, there's time. God created the heaven, there's space, and the earth, there's matter. So you have time, space, matter created, a trinity of trinities there, just as you know, time is past, present, future, space has length, width, height, matter has solid, liquid, gas, you have a trinity of trinities created instantaneously, and the God who created them has to be outside of them. If he's limited by time, he's not God. The guy who created this computer is not in the computer, he's not running around in there changing the numbers on the screen, okay? The God who created this universe is outside of the universe. He's above it, beyond it, in it, through it. He's, he's unaffected by it. So for, and the, the concept that a, a spiritual uh, force cannot have any effect on a material body, well then, I guess you'd have to explain to me things like emotions and love and hatred and envy and jealousy and, and rationality. I mean, if your brain is just a random collection of chemicals that form by chance over billions of years, how on earth can you trust your own reasoning processes and the thoughts that you, you think? Okay? So, um, I, your, your, your question, where did God come from, is assuming a limited God. And that's your problem. The God that I worship is not limited by time, space, or matter. If I could fit the infinite God in my three-pound brain, he would not be worth worshiping, that's for certain. So that's the God that I worship. Thank you. Dr. Hubbard, would you like to... Would you please present a question to the...